We are now ready to create a confidence interval when we do not know the population standard deviation and we are using the t-distribution. Notice we've seen this example before. This is the example we, we looked at already when we talked about the average salary of doctors from public institutions. I want to cancel this though. Right here it says 50 doctors. If you were to refer back to our previous video, we actually changed that to 40. So that's the only difference between what you see here and from the previous problem. Everything else this is the same. You're looking at a significance level of 0.05. If we're taking a confidence level of 95, the significance is 0.05. When we split that into two pieces for each tail, we get 0.025. The sample mean that we obtained from the sample was 145,580. And the sample standard deviation was 13,200. The other things we want to write down, we know the sample size in this case is 40. Now we already answered this question. Do we use a t-value or z-score? We determined we're using a t-value and the reason why is the population standard deviation is unknown. The most common mistake that students make is they see the word standard deviation and then they assume we know the population standard deviation. You will always be given a standard deviation. What you have to determine is, is that standard deviation from the population or the sample? We wouldn't be able to complete this problem if we didn't have a standard deviation. So again, you will always be given a standard deviation. If it's the sample standard deviation is the only one that we're given, then we're going to have to use t's. If you're given both, but you know the population standard deviation, then you're going to use that population standard deviation with z-scores. Also, as we saw in the previous video, this is, we can continue because it meets the requirements of a normal distribution or a sample size over 30. The sample size is 40, so we're good to continue. We're now ready to create our confidence interval, where we take our point estimate, which is our sample mean, and we're going to add and subtract the margin of error. Writing out the formula for margin of error, it's going to look very similar. It's going to be the t-score with alpha over t, or alpha over 2, with a certain amount of degrees of freedom. That's, remember previously, we used z-scores. And instead of having the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, we are now using the sample standard deviation. In the previous video, we found this value. The t-score with alpha over 2, so 0.025 in its tail, each tail, and our degrees of freedom, we have... 40 degrees of freedom, so in this case there are 39. And if you refer to your T chart or you refer back to that video, we got 2.023 as the value we were looking for. If you need to go ahead and look back at that video, please do. Everything else we can just plug in to calculate the margin of error 2.023. That is the T value we need. The sample standard deviation is 13,200. And the square root of n, we're not using degrees of freedom, we are using 40. Degrees of freedom was only used in the t-value. When you calculate that value, when you multiply that out, 2.023 times 13,200 divided by the square root of 40, what do we get? 4,222 and 21. So 4,222 point 21. That's the value we are going to add and subtract from our point estimate of 145,580. We're going to add and subtract this value. So when you subtract that value, so when you take 145,580 and you subtract 4,222 point 21, you get 141,000. 357 and 79 cents. That's a, a dollar figure. And when you add that value, what do we get? 145,580 plus 4,222 and 21, you get 149,802 dollars This is the lower bound and upper bound for our confidence interval.
we would say mu would be between here. If we wrote this as an inequality, this was our estimate. To interpret this, we are 95% confident that the true population parameter, in this case the mean, the average salary of all doctors from public institutions, is contained between these two values of 141,000 approximately up to approximately 149.8. So these are the lower bound and upper bound for our confidence interval. Quickly, I just want to summarize. The only difference between this and when we calculated confidence interval, intervals earlier in this module is that we don't know the population standard deviation. In that case, if we don't know that, we have to use the t distribution. That requires us to look at the alpha over 2, just like before, and also look at this value of degrees of freedom. Using our t chart, we get a t value. And the only other difference between, other than the t value, is that we have the standard deviation here is the sample standard deviation and not the population standard deviation. Other than that, calculating the margin of error and adding that to our point estimate, and then in our interpretation of the confidence interval, are all basically identical. Plugging this information into StatCrunch is quite easy. We're still in the stat menu, just like we were when we were looking at the proportion in Z stats, but now we're looking at T stats, the T distribution because we don't know the population standard deviation. We're looking at one sample with summary. That means with the summary, we don't, uh, we, we're not looking at columns where of, of data, we have the sample mean, we have the sample standard deviation. In this case, our sample mean was 145,580. And if we look back to the sample standard deviation, that was 13,200. Our sample size in this case was 40. We are not doing a hypothesis test. We're looking at a confidence interval with a 95% confidence level. Hit compute, and we're going to get our interval. 141,000. 358.44 and 149,801.56. We're going to have a little bit of difference here. Notice their standard of error is, um, this is a standard error, excuse me, that's not the margin of error. But their difference is, is going to be because they're going to have more exact values. We're using a rounded T score, T value, right? And in that case, we're going to get slightly different numbers. So that's the difference here. I don't mind if you use StatCrunch to check your work. You should have a little bit of difference. But if you have a large difference, that would be something to post to the discussion form so that we can get that cleared away.